Hello and welcome to the Thursday, August 10th, 2017 edition of the Science and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. VirusTotal is a great service operated by Google that allows everybody to upload binaries to the service and have them scanned by a number of different anti-malware tools. Now, the problem with VirusTotal, of course, is that once you upload the particular file to VirusTotal, it stays with VirusTotal and VirusTotal does provide access to files uploaded to researchers and to anti-malware companies. Apparently, some people are still not aware of this and security company Direct Defense did note that a large number of uh, files were uploaded via Carbon Black. Now, Carbon Black is an endpoint security solution. It, it has its own analysis of files, runs them in sandboxes, uh, does various signature scans on any file that it encounters, and it does offer the option to users to upload these files to virus total. Apparently this option is not enabled by default. The user has to enable it in order to make the tool upload the files, but it looks like a lot of large companies went ahead and enabled it. By default, Carbon Black does take a more secure approach in that it only sends hashes of files to VirusTotal in order to check if they are known malicious files. Of course, sending the hash to VirusTotal only works if the identical file was already identified as malicious. It won't work if a slight variation of the file is being investigated. But that again is something that the user has to figure out whether or not they think it's worthwhile to risk leaking data to VirusTotal by sending complete binaries. Carbon Black does display a privacy notice when you enable the virus total feature, but then again, who reads those privacy notices? So regardless uh, this specific case, my recommendation is always, if you do want to do some wholesale scanning with VirusTotal, let's say scan every single attachment that you're receiving via email. Now I've seen people do that. Only send the hash to VirusTotal. Do not send the full attachment to VirusTotal. Only send the entire file if you are somewhat suspicious that it's probably malicious or have scanned it first to make sure there is no personal or confidential information in the file. I'll link to Carbon Plaques as well as to the Direct Defense blog in the show notes so you can compare it to yourself and make up your own mind whether or not Carbon Plaque was at fault here. And of course, this isn't really a new issue. This has been written about before. Carbon Plaque is probably not the only tool that allows users to upload files to VirusTotal. And a lot of energy these days is created via solar roofs and other photovoltaic generation systems. Now in Europe, for apparently, and this already has reached a scale of 90 gigawatt, which is about a dozen or so nuclear power plants worth of energy that's being produced by solar roofs and the like. The problem with this kind of power generation, of course, is that it's very decentralized. Now, decentralized also means that you do like remote control for these power generation units. And that, of course, happens via commodity internet connections. New research now shows that, and that shouldn't really be a surprise to anybody, that uh, these systems are very vulnerable and essentially riddled with flaws that can be used to change control parameters or simply just turn off the generation system. Now, given the scale at which this generation is happening these days, researchers are warning that if someone would target a large number of these generation systems, it would actually cause instabilities in the power grid. Now, if these uh, systems would be shut down in large numbers, this wouldn't just affect the generation capacity, but it would also affect how power is actually distributed within the power grid. And it can be difficult to quickly adjust distribution in order to make up for this sudden loss in capacity. 
to illustrate the problem, researchers have now published uh, more than a dozen different vulnerabilities in these control systems uh, to educate users and the public at large that these vulnerabilities are real. Now, how much the entire scenario actually will be able to play out, that's a little bit difficult to estimate given that power distribution systems, of course, have multiple fail safes built in to prevent something like this from actually spreading beyond a local area. So don't be fooled just by the good looking website that these researchers put up in order to publicize quite successfully uh, these flaws. Uh, but overall, nevertheless, I think people should address these issues, should patch them, and uh, probably should come up with better ways to connect to these systems in order to prevent any outages, whether they're localized or not. In the past, I talked a couple times about how Node Package Manager packages, these NPM packages used by Node.js, can be used to smuggle malicious code into otherwise benign projects. Well, Duo Security now has an interesting blog post about how to go hunting for these malicious packages. We have seen this happen a couple of times where either typo squatting was being used or developer accounts were compromised in order to upload malicious NPM packages. So if you're using Node.js, uh, take a look at what Duo Security wrote here and maybe take a quick look at any packages being used by any projects that you're managing. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.